it was a few weeks ago that a number of celebrities released a version of John Lennon's Imagine. Now, I'm not going to comment on the appropriateness of this, nor the musicality. That's been done by many others. It was the choice of song which struck me as odd and worthy of comment. Certainly the overall theme of the song is laudable. Imagine if all human beings could be as one, that we could actually peacefully coexist without conflict and strife. But it's that first line that caught my attention. Imagine there's no heaven. That's an odd message to send out during a time of global crisis. So let's do just that. Let's imagine there is no heaven. There's nothing more to life than this. You're born, you eat, you sleep, you work, you pay taxes. Although if you can afford the right accountant, you may not need to do that. You get sick, you die. The end. That's it. Nothing more. To me, that sounds rather bleak. It's an especially inappropriate message at a time when many are feeling scared because of COVID-19. We are isolated from one another due to lockdown, many of us either fearing for our own health or the health of a relative. Many of us are coming to terms with the behaviour of our fellow human beings. During normal time, we can usually ignore selfish behaviour, but this crisis has shown a much needed spotlight on people living only for themselves and putting others in danger to fulfill that selfish desire. I cannot imagine how it must feel in this context to be given the message, well, this is all there is to life, so tough. It would certainly leave me feeling lost and hopeless. If this is the best of life, this kind of fear, sickness and death, and once I'm gone, I'm gone. Well, what's the point in carrying on? So let's try something else. What if instead of imagining there is no heaven, we imagine that there is a heaven? I do need to start with a bit of a disclaimer. We need to be careful by what we mean by heaven. For many, when we think of heaven, we imagine lots of clouds and angelic hosts playing lyres. We imagine a kind of floaty light existence, lacking anything real or meaningful. If this is the kind of heaven we're imagining, well, that feels about as hopeless to me as there being no heaven at all. For Christians, heaven is a shorthand way of speaking about the future God has planned for us. And today, as Christians celebrate Easter Sunday or Resurrection Day, we remember how God has made that future possible. When God first created the world, he created everything good. He created us human beings and formed a special relationship with us. We are told that we are made in the image of God. We therefore exist reflecting particular aspects of God. We are special. But we spoiled everything. We rejected God and his ways. We decided to do things our own way. We live selfishly, causing hurt and pain to ourselves and one another. By rejecting God, we caused all of creation to fall away from God's desired state. Suddenly, not only were we broken, but our world was broken. The place in which we were meant to live joyfully now causes us pain and suffering. Things like war and disease became part of our existence. And finally, the spectre of death cast its shadow over us all. All this Christians describe as sin. And God would have been well within his rights to think, well, they've made their choice. Now they live with the consequences. 
the worst of those consequences being eternal separation from God. God is the opposite of sinful. He is holy. And holiness cannot abide sinfulness. So as long as we were sinful, we were separated from God. Unless something changes, we are stuck like this. No matter how hard we try, we cannot recover. We cannot live in a way that offsets our sinfulness. Philosophies and other religions try to shape human behaviour in a way that will once again make us pleasing to God, but none of it works. No matter how hard we try, we cannot climb our way back up to God. Mercifully, and in his love, God decided that when we could not reach up to him, he would reach down to us. The Bible tells us that the wage of sin is death. You see, God is just. He knows that sin needs to be punished. Even we, with our imperfect justice system, know that wrong behaviour deserves some kind of punishment and that the punishment should fit the crime. And so it is that the punishment for sin is death and separation from God. God did not wish us to bear the burden of our own sinfulness, so he decided to select one person who would represent all humanity. Upon this person, God would pour all of his punishment, thus setting the rest of us free. The trouble was, there was no one so perfect as to represent us all, and no human could bear such punishment. So God decided to carry the punishment himself. He came as Jesus Christ. He lived showing us what it means to follow God's way, not our own way. And he died in our place, setting us free. The prophet Isaiah described it like this. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. But that is only part of the story. God has dealt with all things past. Fine. But what's next? What about our future? Well, what Jesus did next proves to us that we have a future. Resurrection. Jesus rose again, dealing a final blow to all the powers of evil and death. He showed that he had not only mastered them, he had destroyed them. As he rose again from the dead, he declared, God is making all things new. Here is the promise. Beyond death, there is a future. There is something more for you than this broken life. And that's not an ethereal existence. There is a new heaven and a new earth. You will rise again. You will be given a new body, still recognisably your own, but transformed to last for eternity, just as God had originally intended. You will live with God and with Christ and with all who are faithful to him. This place will be free of all the pain and suffering and sadness of this world. It is better than this world in every way. And that is why Christians celebrate the resurrection of Jesus today. Because it is the sign of God's promise. There is something better for you in store. So when life gets hard and there are troubles around you, persevere on because you know there is something better to come. Hold on to the hope of this future and know that the suffering of this world is only temporary, but the eternal peace of the life to come is everlasting. We imagine this future in the sense that we don't know exactly what it will be like until we get there. But we don't need to imagine it in the sense of making it up because it is real. God has promised this future and he keeps his promises. But here's what's important. Imagine you are in that future. If you're already a Christian, then that is what God has in store for you. 
And we are allowed to anticipate that with excitement and imagine what it will be like living for eternity with God in the new creation. If you are not a Christian and you want to imagine yourself there, then it's easy to do so. All you need to do is believe. Admit to God that you've been rejecting him. Ask that he would put your sin upon Jesus and in return receive the absolute assurance of the promised resurrection. God loves us and he makes it as easy as that. No difficult tasks or burdens, no regulations or obligations. Simply this, believe. Whoever you are, and wherever you are watching this, would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us who are already Christians, we thank you for the promise that resurrection brings, that there is a future for us all. There is a new life and a hope that we can hold on to, especially when times are hard. For those who are not yet Christians, we pray that you would lovingly reveal yourself to them and that they would be able to take hold of that truth, that you love them, that you have risen for them, and that if they believe in you, they too may receive that hope of resurrection. Bless us this resurrection day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If from watching this video, you found that you want to know Jesus or know more about what it means to follow him, then by all means get in touch, either with me through Clinkert Hill Church or look online for a local church near you. I'm sure there will be someone who will be able to help you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. May God bless you this Resurrection Day, and I'll speak to you soon.